the amphibians have a stratified epidermis that is made up of multiple layers of cells of epithelial tissue and then these epithelial tissues they have beneath them the connective tissue uh, uh, thick connective tissue and the epithelium it dips down in the form of glands it imaginates into the uh, dermis in the connective tissue so as we discussed previously that most of the glands are glandular cells they are epithelial in nature so this epithelium is making mucus and serous glands but their location is inside the connective tissue and as we saw that pigmentation in case of insects it occurs in connective tissue so their connective tissue are dermis it contains mucus and serous gland and it is also containing uh, pigment cells so uh, the cells that have um, pigments in them quinone uh, substances in their uh, cytoplasm so the amphibians they have multiple layered thick epidermis or epithelial tissue and then epithelial derived glands mucus and serous glands they are present in the connective tissue or dermis and the dermis or connective tissue it is multiple layer thick and it is also having cells that are having pigment in them the earliest amphibians they were covered by dermal bone scales like they are present in fishes in fish we saw that the connective tissue or dermis it has uh, modified type of uh, cells that are uh, having scales on them during evolution keratin production uh, keratin is a protein and uh, this protein is increased in the outer layer of skin cells uh, of the epithelium uh, as we saw the epithelium is multiple uh, layer thick so the uppermost layer it has uh, most deposition of the uh, keratin in them in order to protect the animals from ultraviolet light the mucus that is produced from the mucus gland helps the animal to prevent desiccation and uh, uh, they also help in gas exchange and uh, make the body slimy uh, to escape in reptiles the multiple layered thick epidermis is cornified cornification is the uh, program cell death of the uh, keratinocytes that the cells that contain keratin in them uh, it is a slow process uh, of the formation of dead cells to create a physical barrier for the skin so this outer layer is called as stratum corneum this stratum corneum are the uh, stratum corneum mean the surface uh, that is cornified it is the outermost layer of the epidermis in case of reptiles it is uh, thick it contains keratin in it that protects the animal from desiccation and the uh, ultraviolet lights it lacks glands and it is modified into retinized scales scutes beaks claws plaques and spiny crests the keratin is one of the family of structural fibrous protein that is having fibers in it uh, it is also known as scleroprotein it is sclerotin protein that is the tough protein the protein fibers in one layer of keratin are interlinked with the another layer of uh, the fibers of another layer to make the structure strengthen so it is the key structural material making up scales here nails feathers horn claws hooves and the outermost layer of the skin among vertebrates and these structures they are not having any minerals in them they are not having any deposition of calcium or anything they are made up of that the hair, hair nails feathers horns claws hooves scales they are only having in them the uh, protein fibers that are keratin and they these fiber they are interlinked and they are made, making hard structure even without deposition of calcium 
below stratum corneum there is stratum granulosum in which the keratinocytes are not yet cornified uh, but they are uh, now going toward cornification they have deposited the keratin in them and then is stratum germination germ germinativum uh, stratum germinativum as the name shows germination it means this layer is highly uh, regenerative layer it is producing new, new cells and beneath this epithelium that is made up of stratum corneum stratum granulosum stratum germinavitum there is another uh, layer that is basement membrane like all the epithelial tissues they almost have uh, that is a dead material it is the extracellular material on which the epithelial cells are stuck and then beneath is the pigmented layer in connective tissue that contains the guanine in them one of them we know is a melanin and then is the are the dense fiber the fibers of the connective tissue they are actually again protein fibers they are lying close to each other and they are making a compact type of uh, connective tissue then we can see here the loose fibers and blood vessels they are passing we know the connective tissue they are highly vascularized so blood vessels are passing through these blood vessels they are not only nourishing this uh, connect uh, the connective tissue but it also they are also nourishing the epithelial tissue and we can see here uh, there are no glands in epidermis so then uh, there are loose fibers of the connective tissue the fibers that are having gaps between them during molting the old outer layers separate from newly formed epidermis and uh, the diffusion of fluid between the layer aids it. Like reptilia and other multicellular organisms, the, uh, the skin or integument of the birds is made up of uh, epidermis and dermis. And we know the epidermis, it is uh, epithelial in nature and the dermis it is connective tissue in nature epidermis when there would be epithelial tissue then beneath there would be a basement membrane and this membrane uh, basement membrane it is extracellular material that is adhering the cells to the surface and the dermis it is connective tissue that is having collagenous fibers or it is having elastic protein fibers so these collagenous fibers they are rope like fibers they are strong uh, when they are stretched and when they are pulled uh, but they are inelastic they would not recoil when we stretch them they would not come back to their original uh, length and elastic fibers they are like springs when we uh, strike them they would recoil but they are not strong enough they could uh, break so the collagenous fiber they give strength and the elastic fibers they give elasticity to the skin in case of birds unlike reptilia the epidermis or the outermost layer it is two to three cell layer thick and it is thinner than reptilia and another difference is that the uh, outer layer outermost layers they are cretinized but they are not much cretinized they are soft Another thing that we saw that the uh, reptiles and birds and mammals they have skin derived characters from their epidermis so in case of birds these uh, characteristics or these uh, features associated with skins are feathers so these feathers they derive from uh, epidermis due to their uh, cornification or uh, we would say keratinization and the dermis it is containing blood and lymphatic vessels we know they also contain sensory nerves in them feathers could be associated with smooth muscles that control the position of the feathers and the aquatic birds they also uh, have another layer uh, beneath their dermis that layer is beneath connective tissue that derma, uh, that layer is called as hypodermis and this hypodermis contains our store energy and it contains fats 
and insulate the body that would not allow the loss of heat from the body about feathers we would study in practical class here we would have a short overview the feathers they are uh, collectively called as plumage of the bird and it is not necessary that the feathers they are present on the whole uh, outer surface of the uh, bird they could be present on few areas that are called as uh, terrali and those areas that are not having the feathers they are called as apteri the feathers are derived from uh, the uh, epithelial cells of the um, epidermis when they get keratinized the cornification of these uh, epithelial tissue would occur and that is the position of the uh, keratin and the uh, death of these cells a typical feather would look like a, a leaf of the plant uh, there would be a central shaft uh, of the feather this shaft it is uh, it divided into two regions the outer uh, region that is outside of the skin it is this region of the shaft would be called as uh, rachis and the region that is uh, embedded in the skin is called as uh, calamus the areas around the central shaft on both side they are called as vein of the feather these areas are vein they are composed of the branches uh, of fibers coming out from the shaft these fibers they are called as barbs the barbs they give rise to the uh, barbels uh, uh, barbules and then these barbules they give rise to the barbicles and that barbicles they have hook like uh, uh, tiny hooks so th these tiny hooks they get attached to each other uh, so this composition is actually the branches that are giving rise to uh, giving rise from shaft to the uh, barbicles the shaft it give rise to fibers that are called as barbs barb give rise to barbules and then barbules they give rise to the barbicles the feathers they could be classified on the basis of their structure and on the basis of their function into location into uh, different types like fa flight feathers they could be contour feathers down feathers semi plumes they could be bristle feathers or fallopian plumes so these feathers uh, there could be many more uh, classification of these feathers uh, if we see flight feathers uh, these feathers they are present on wings or tails these flight feathers they would be long like here and they have uh, one side of the feather would be broader as compared to the other side so one side of the vein is the broader as compared to the second side uh, they also have stronger barbules in them we say the uh, rachis it give rise to or the shaft it give rise to the bar barbs and barbs they give rise to the barbules so these barbules they are stronger in case of the flight feathers in order to give them uh, the ability to fly when we see contour feathers as their name shows they give rise shape and color to the bird so uh, they are found everywhere except the beak legs and feet contour feathers uh, they are colored at tip of the shaft or rachis and they, at the base the contour feathers they become fluffy uh, so fluffy feathers they are also called as downy so they become downy at the base in order to insulate the bird the down feathers they are fluffy feathers uh, they are having no shafts 
so these uh, are they would have little shafts uh, they are soft and fluffy they help in, to insulate bird by trapping air between uh, these feathers and the uh, skin of the bird so the birds that are uh, living in cold environment are that are uh, the swimmers like herons they have special type of down feathers that are called as powder down feathers those feathers they break up and they make powder this powder powder it spreads on the body of the bird and uh, it acts as water repellent in order to protect the uh, bird from getting wet on uh, from wet water the semi plume feathers they are cross between down and contour feathers uh, unlike down feathers they have well formed shaft uh, but their barbicels uh, they are not well developed so they are soft like down feather they are present under contour feathers and they are also used for insulation the bristle feathers these are uh, stiff feathers uh, they are uh, only barbs are found at the base of the feather uh, at the uh, near the uh, calamus and the bristle feathers they are found on the mouth of the insect eating uh, birds where they act as funnel uh, to trap the uh, insect and they can also pr be present on the eyes to act as eyelashes philoplume feathers are very small and they have a bunch of barbs on their uh, tip uh, of the shaft so they are not attached to any muscle uh, but they have nerve ending in them attached to them so they would act as sensory uh, feather for uh, the uh, positioning of the feathers for flight insulation and preening